Hey besties, it is Sister Wives Sunday and I have notes, a lot of them, and you're going to see me glancing down at them a lot because I have a lot to say. So let's get started. This is uh, season 18, episode 8, and uh, oof, oof. So we start off with these two goobers showing up to Mary's house in separate cars, like of course they do. Because Robin has the gray truck and Cody has that stupid convertible. And I genuinely hate seeing him drive that stupid convertible around. It is so obnoxious. I have hated it from the word go. You have too many children. Not cool. So they get out and Cody's like, oh, my hair is wild. And he needs his sunglasses to hold it back. I'm sorry. I wear glasses. I do not use my glasses to hold my hair back. Like, there you go. Um, they are not a substitute for actual hair care products. They are not a substitute for like a ponytail or a headband. Sorry, bro. And also he goes out and pulls out the most ladylike men's sunglasses I think I've ever seen. I don't know what this like bejeweled sorority girl logo is on the side of this, but it does not look anything like what he's hoping for. Robin is claiming she wants to be supportive of all of his relationships and boo, we have never seen that. Never, ever. Uh, Cody spends every minute giving that smiley little look at his wife while Mary's talking and she's doing that weird tongue thing. And she does it for a really long time. And I'm actually starting to think that I've noticed that she seems to do it when she's trying to send a signal to Cody. Like she's trying to manipulate a conversation. It feels to me, I've seen her do it on the couch. I've seen her do it here. She did it with Mary, almost like a signal, like, I don't like what you're saying. I don't like what you're doing. And you're going to change this and say the right thing. So Robin, what exactly do you want him to say? You want to hold up some cue cards so he gets it right? Like, I don't, what is your will? Let him know because thy will be done, right? Um, uh, oh, I missed that Robin knocks on the door before they come in and Mary says, come in. And she just stands there confused, like some sort of weird energy vampire or like she doesn't understand how a door works because she expected this conversation to be outside since that's basically where she lives her entire life when it comes to other people. I don't know. So Cody gets really weird about sitting down and asks to sit in the spot with Mary's book. Like, bro, what are you doing? Uh, I don't want to sit in the middle, weirdo. So, like, Mary seems kind of off-put that he wants to sit in the one spot in her entire house where there's something in the way. But, like, maybe he's just used to being at Robin's house where everything's so hoarded that the only chairs you can sit on have stuff around them. So, like, maybe that's, like, a comfort item to him. She should have just left the book there so that he could snuggle it and feel like he was at Robin's house and feel good. Uh, so, yeah. And then he starts talking about how Robin tries to stay away from him when he's with Mary and how the family is an unsafe place for he and Robin's love story. Gross. Don't, don't try to bring us into this. We have seen your story for 18 seasons and we are done. We don't want to see any more of it. We are over it. We get it. You and Robin are pretty sure you should be able to do whatever you and a pencil box want to do wherever, whenever, in front of whoever, and I'm not cool. So um, I'm not going to rehash the PDA conversation anymore. We have heard this for forever. He doesn't have any other wives to worry about, and I'm just over it. So we're not going to rehash that one more time on here. If you want to rehash it in the comments, we are definitely able to talk about it, but I am genuinely angry at the arrogance of this man to think that he can sit here and talk to us about polygamy when he hasn't been living polygamy in years. Uh, so... Mary says, how are things? And he says, good. And we immediately cut to Robin, who's like, not good. Things suck. <laughs> and then he calls this a quasi-plural marriage mess. Honey, who made it that way? I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. Um, so he says, everyone's leaving. Yeah. Yeah. So Mary's trying to explain she's going to be in Utah more and uh, still staying in Flagstaff, but downsizing. And Cody is clearly not getting the point of the conversation. Um, he does everything he can to not give a damn about Mary and her wants or needs. And it feels like he is actually being actively antagonistic toward her. And you might say, 
But Cozy, he didn't say it. He didn't say anything. He didn't even, he barely, yeah, that's my point. She is just looking for literally anything. And he's just glancing at Robin and giving little smiles and like, this is what we want. This is what we want. She's going to go. And Robin's like, stop. This isn't what we want. She's going to take her money. Um, and maybe that's too far. I don't know. But it, it, he doesn't care. And Mary's 100% right. The conversation that she had with Robin last time where she said he's not going to care. She's right. So then it brings up the, the ring thing. And if you want a deeper analysis, I did a video about it already. I'll link it down in the description and in the comments below. Um, I said a lot of the stuff I wanted to say about it then. But the only thing that I noticed... Um, I actually did notice one other thing, but let me give a brief overview. Uh, Mary notices Cody has a new ring on his left hand. It is uglier than sin. I hate it. I already went off about how much I hate it. And it's replaced the wedding band, the Clotta ring that he previously wore that represented all of the wives. If you'll recall back in the first season, they go to get this ring and they ha it has four diamonds in it. And they even joke about who's the diamond in the center. And they say, oh, it's whoever he's with tonight. Right. And that's his favorite, whoever he's with tonight. So what I did notice, though, is an important thing. I kind of forgot about this um, for a hot minute. And then I was like, wait a minute. The legal marriage happened December 11th. And the only reason I know that is, like, somebody I love, that's their birthday. And that's unfortunate. <laughs> um, and so I need to go back and rewatch. Was he wearing this around that time? Because we know the fight with Janelle was around the 16th. So I kind of need to go back and rewatch and see. Because was this an anniversary gift from either Robin or himself to himself? Uh, to kind of signify. Yeah, you get what I'm trying to say. Uh, so then we go to Garrison's new house. And we get to hear about how Gabe and Gwen are potentially moving in with Garrison. Which I'm kind of with Christine. This could be a bad idea. We know that they all have pets. We've seen Garrison's cats. Because he has Kathy, and then I think he has another one, and I can't remember its name, but they're so cute. And then um, Gabe has a dog whose name we don't get to know, and we know that Gwen has Noelle, her dog. And uh, she also brings up that politically they are very different, and she's not wrong. They are, and that's okay. Politically, I can be different than a lot of people that I love and care about, but that doesn't mean that I can't spend time with them. So, you know, it's fine. Uh, but I am a little concerned about the pets because pets sometimes don't mingle so well. So they ask, you know, about picking the rooms. Are we going to get to pick or whatever? And Garrison's, uh-uh. Uh, the rooms you're going to be based off of me, which, duh, Garrison, love, you precious cinnamon roll. You are the homeowner. Clearly this gets to be your choice. And he mentions that the one is a smaller room with lots of closet space and the other is a larger room with little closet space. And Gwen makes a joke about compensating for closet space because she came out of the closet. I'm not, honestly, the way that the joke came out in that context was a little confusing. Like I understood what she was trying to say, but like, are you trying to say you need more closet space or that you need less because you're not, I didn't, you know what I'm analyzing. It's stupid. She made a joke. It went over Garrison's head for sure. And while I got it, I didn't get it clearly. Um, so Janelle tells Gwen and Gabe that they would have to share a bathroom. And so Christine lets us know that she has accidentally used men's rooms before and that they are disgusting. And to that, I say, mm, nay, nay, that depends on location, location, location. I worked a job where I had to clean restrooms. And of course the women had to clean the women's room. The men had to clean the men's room, but it was like after clothes. So, uh, I was pretty much of the opinion that if I could clean the men's room, I was doing it because the men's room was practically spotless compared to that lady's room. Oh, Lord. No, thank you. Um, so Janelle lets us know that um, the kids might not have the same mom, but they function as siblings. And then Gabe says that the family is all abandoned ship in different lifeboats. But he's really happy that Janelle and Christine's kids, are, you know, they kept their kids together. They, I guess, uh, they're tying their life rafts together. I don't know. Um, Garrison really gently explains that he's going to need lease agreements for his siblings. And uh, go Garrison smart protect your new asset protect yourself you don't want to have a situation where your siblings come in and there's a fight or whatever um and i really see no problem in asking the moms for the first lease to co-sign i think that's smart and acceptable because christine points out too in this conversation that it's not if they fight it is when so i think that's smart and then gabe is joking about i'm gonna leave my caddy in the shower so gwen says well i'm not gonna clean up my dog's poop and i think at that moment garrison's probably going what have i done <laughs> And then we cut back to Mary and Robin trying to explain about Lizzie's. And Cody wants to know 
if Mary is trying to get him to read between the lines. Sweetheart, nope. I think she's being very clear. She is flat out telling you, I'm moving my business there. I'm not moving there. I'm going to have a home in Flagstaff. You're not listening. So then Cody goes on telling her about, are you going to move the clothes on racks? Because we've moved the clothes on racks before, and that seems really easy. And Mary's like, no, we haven't. And he's like, sure we did. And then we were at this show in Las Vegas at Oddworks and this lady and blah. And Mary's like, what are you talking about? I don't remember any of this. And um, Cody, that was a long time ago. Is it long enough ago that um, she doesn't remember? Or is it long enough ago that you thought you could get creative like you did with Truly or like the whole story about Christine saying you couldn't be married to Mary anymore. And then uh, we're just hoping that Mary would say, oh, okay, that I guess I just forgot. And anyway, so uh, Robin wonders if there's like uh, some potential here in the made up story because she's like, well, you know, he wouldn't remember this. Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, Robin is still talking like Mary's my wife, and I don't need this pressure from you. <clears throat> okay, so then Robin goes back to talking about Janelle and Christine's relationships, which, frankly, please shut up, um, and that she just wants to show Mary some hope and admits that Cody is not helping. Duh. He does not want to help. He does not think he is married to Mary. And then she says it might be a deal breaker. Well, Pumpkin, you've been talking about deal breakers with everybody else for long enough. Make up your mind. Um, oh, so we go back to Garrison's house where they are now teasing Janelle. Christine is teasing Janelle about saying, uh, well, I told your mom that the, the condo next to mine or the, yeah, I think she's a condo, the townhouse, the townhouse next to mine is going to be empty. And, um, so, you know, you should move in. Pardon me. And, um. Then she rejected my offer, like stone cold rejected it. And Janelle's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know. Anything's on the table. And they're like, what? So Janelle says she might like to live in North Carolina with Maddie, possibly. Like near Maddie, not with her. Um, and then she jokes that she and Christine should just buy houses all over the country so that they can always live together. And everybody's like, yeah, that seems like sense. So then they bring up the holidays again. And we talk about how they got the rental and Cody never showed up and blah, blah, blah. And Garrison's like, well. I'll host the holidays here. That's fine. Then we don't have to worry about getting a rental. We don't have to worry about all of that stuff. We can just be here. And I thought that was super cute. I think that's great. Thank you, Garrison. That's a great idea. And I'm pretty sure we've seen on Instagram where that has been the case. Because if I remember correctly, we have a picture of Gabe holding his dog and Peyton is there and Logan, I think, is actually there. Or maybe it's just Hunter. But I feel like Logan was in the picture and Savannah and Janelle. And it looks like it's at Garrison's house because that looks like the staircase that he was standing on in this frame. Um, so... Christine asks, does everybody think the holidays are just going to be separate now? And they're like, well, whatever you do, Christine, that's what we want to do, which is so sweet. That is just the sweetest. And she's like, well, I'm not getting together with everybody, but I'll hang out with Janelle and her kids, which is lovely. Um, and then she kind of notices, you know, things are a little, mm. and then Janelle says um, that she's probably never spending a holiday with Cody again. Good. So... The boys seem extra bothered. Um, and Christine says that her kids were used to never having their dad. Uh, and that's, that's really sad. Like, how do you sit there and think that at the bare minimum, six of your kids just are unbothered by not having their dad? And I say six because we know McKelty is close, but Mary has a kid who Cody seems to not have a relationship with. And that is the only time I'm going to mention her child because her child has chosen to keep their life private, and that's it. We're done. Um, I'm respecting that. Over. Uh, and then Janelle tells us that her boys are obviously upset, and Garrison seems to be a lot angrier and sadder than he'd been before, and Christine acknowledges this has got to be more devastating for Janelle's kids. And deep in my heart, I feel like that's even more devastating for Christine's. Um, so we go back to Mary's house and Cody now is actively being antagonistic in his confessionals and I'm about to get angry. So just so you know, I, I have notes written out and I'm going to refer to them because otherwise I'm going to yell. Uh, so Robin is forcing Mary to bring up her concern and Mary doesn't want to and says, fine. And then she says she didn't want Robin to think or him to think. 
and just trails off because Robin starts getting really awkward and weird at this point and derails the whole conversation. So she's in confessionals and she's she's like, I'm trying to get Cody to tell Mary she's still, or I'm trying to get Mary to tell Cody she's still committed. And the audacity of this whole person. No. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. We're about to get actually angry. Because we haven't heard the worst of it yet. Um, so Mary says, I'm not the one who finalized anything. And Robin gives her a look like, fish, there are cameras here. You need to shut up. Like, the look on her face. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. So Mary says she doesn't have a problem telling Cody, but she's pretty sure Co- Cody's going to have a problem hearing it. Um, and she tells him, this does not mean I'm leaving the family or that I'm leaving you. It's just a business thing. And now Mr. Baldy Curls gets up on here and with his full chest says, and I'm going to read this word for word, good on you, Mary. It actually has no effect on me. Can you hate him more? Can we hate him more? I, I genuinely don't know. So he tells us he's always known that the B&B was a sentimental purchase and that he didn't want her to buy it. And Cody, shut up. She bought it without you. Go away. Uh, so now we get hit in the head with, I wonder why she's still living in Flagstaff. So Cody keeps acting like she's moving in and not operating a B&B, and I think he genuinely has no idea how a B&B works. Like, he really thinks that innkeepers don't stay in their inns to maintain them, or, like, keep them safe, there's security issues, Cody keeps asking what are moving there, and it is pissing off Robin. And, uh, yeah, no, it gets, it, mm, it gets a little bit ugly. Give me one second. I just want to double check. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to double check that I had written down exactly what I, I wanted to say here. Um, so Robin's ticked at Cody horsing around and she tells him that Mary is not living there and it's still a business. And Cody kind of seems to retreat into himself at this point. So good. Uh, now, Robin, admit that you have some power in this relationship. Please, do me that favor. Uh, so, Robin's really frustrated that Cody seems to be pushing Mary to live in the B&B. And then Mary has her best line ever. And I'm going to read it. Sometimes, people have two homes. And guess what? So do polygamous men. They have multiple homes, and they live in both, usually. And the contempt in her eyes... The look in her eyes is actually kind of a little scary. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, so uh, Cody for sure has never looked into how a B&B operates, and he explains to us that he has no clue. And so I am, like, super glad that he told Mary no, he wasn't going to buy into it when he wanted to be a family business and profit share, because thank God Mary was like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Um, because he'd have run it straight into the ground. And he admits the relationship with he and Rob- Robin for Mary is remote. Meaning, I don't know, because Mary told us last time that Robin doesn't reach out. So uh, so then Mary's like, I wonder why he cares what room I sleep in. He hasn't cared for the last decade. And that she's pointing out she's intending to use the space that her mom used in order to keep things operating and functional. She says she doesn't want it to be her, her house. She still wants... Um, uh, she tells him she still has hope, sorry. Not that she wants to have hope, she does have hope. And she begins to cry here because she's really anxious about running both these businesses out of this and the move and everything else. And honestly, I think she's a little angry too because he's being purposely ignorant in the way that he's behaving toward her and it would grate on anyone's nerves. So she goes into confessional and tells us that she's hoping he would care and he clearly didn't. Um, and I get it, he should at least care. So Robin uh, reminds him that Mary doesn't want to move there. She doesn't want to make it her house. Um, And Mary says these conversations remind her that nothing's going to change and that she's just supposed to do whatever it is that she wants. And then Cody says he sees Robin being an advocate for the reconciliation, and he doesn't like it. Um, He sees his one wife he has a great relationship with. And if he abandons these other women, not his other wives, not the mothers of his children, not even members of his family, these other women. Okay. That she will lose respect for him. And frankly, if she hasn't, she's, what did I truly say? She's loco in the cocoa. So, uh, 
So then um, we're jumping back to Christine telling us that it's Janelle's birthday and she's in Flagstaff for it. And Janelle's birthday is May 6th. So we have something to anchor our tether to in the timeline and kind of hold on to. Um, and she lets us know that um, Maddie doesn't seem to be very happy that Janelle's willing to go on a date with Cody. And Christine says she's going to be there to support her whatever she wants and tells Maddie... You know, we just have to love your mom and support her in whatever she wants to do, even if she wants to go back to your dad. And frankly, I understand she's trying to help Maddie find peace with this, but she's clearly upset with him now, and I can see why. So he seems to have written her off completely, and I'm still livid for her at his behavior when Evie was born. I am not a stranger to... I'm not a stranger to traumatic births, much like Evie had. Um, I went into labor way too early and had an unplanned C-section. Obviously, we were planning to have one way down the line, but not early. Um, and before I even got to meet my babies, they were whisked away to the NICU because they couldn't breathe on their own, much like Evie couldn't breathe on her own. And do you think my dad just kind of went to solve a problem especially in Arizona with another woman. No, my dad went down to the NICU with my husband to go meet my babies that once again, I didn't get to meet to make sure that my husband knew that he was comforted and he was loved and that these babies were safe and to come back and tell me that my babies were safe. Whether or not I could see them, they were going to be okay. And um, yeah, Cody opted to fly back to Arizona to fix Robin's problem for her. And maybe that's an unfair assessment. Maybe that's a really bad opinion to take, but it is my opinion. And as somebody who's gone through something like that, I could see how Maddie would be super angry at him. But no one came here for traumatic birth stories, so we're going to move on. Janelle lets us know she's just looking for a nice, easy time on this date. Um, and then we get Cody treating Mary like the dirt on Coyote Pass again. So he claims that Mary doesn't know what she wants. She's just telling him and asking him things. Yeah, bro, she's telling you what she wants. And now he has ideas, so God help us all. Hmm. He asks her if she has any way to do something crazy fast on Coyote Pass. And it's like, um, uh, hey, uh, Myrtle. Myron. Mm -hmm. Maraschino Cherry. What? Mary. Mary. Hey, um, do you think you could spot me a bit of money to like pay off Coyote Pass so that I can split it up for uh, Robin's chicken tenders and like leave you out in the cold? That is essentially what he is asking at this point. And, and you're not going to convince me otherwise. That's my opinion. It's what I think. And uh. so then he asks her if she'd have any interest in living in an RV on the land like Janelle did. Are you kidding me? This woman just told you she's going to Utah, and now you're like, oh, well, maybe you want to live in an RV on the... And then he's like, um... She's like, hell no. And he goes on to tell her how much it sucked to live there. And it sucked because Janelle has dogs. So Mary rightly calls him out and says, hey, Mary, do this because it'll be easier to live in an RV if it's just you all alone. Also, Cody, keep Janelle's dogs out your mouth. You and your dog kicking bride can head right on back up the hill to the McMansion Hoarder House and live your little swamp ogre fantasy over on the brown toxic pond. Cool? Cool. Huh. Okay. So then Robin says this is why she has hope. Because Cody says things to keep Mary out on the property. And it's like, are you in this conversation with us? Like, seriously. I, mm. And then he says he wants to build a barn dominium. And Mary can live in there with his summer car and all his junk. And Mary's like, oh, good. He wants to shove me in there with all the junk he doesn't want to see or deal with. The cars, the storage, the Mary. I, mm. She says she thinks that he's amazing. He thinks that he's being amazing and gracious. And in fact, he's just being sincerely insulting. Cody says there's no good answers and the writing's on the wall. But as, uh, And every time he tries to break up with her, essentially, she won't have any of it. So he'll just live in denial with her. Gross. Uh, she says she went in knowing he wasn't going to care. And he says he isn't concerned about her leaving. 
And of course he's not, because he isn't concerned about anything about her. And then Robin comes back and says, Mary can be in such a dark place. And I'll tell her, Mary, if you want to leave, just... And then she says, no, no, don't say that to me ever again. You have to fight for me because I'm too weak to carry on with all of this. So you have to fight for me. When did she say this? When in the last two years when you weren't calling her, did she say this? Just asking for a friend. Um, so then we get... Cody picking up Janelle for this birthday date. And my brain legitimately hurts from this. He says it's been six months since the fight and then four months since she said she wanted to stay separate. And uh, he goes on to say that she keeps saying that she can't, that they can't reconcile and he doesn't get why. So he's clueless about what the actual problem is. Okay. Then he thinks he needs to tell us that it's a weird place to be in to be getting divorced and still sleeping with your wife and lover and honest to God, I'm going to throw up. Please stop. I'm begging you. I don't want to hear about this. Stop. So then thankfully he goes on to say that they need to unwind the past, which in this conversation, he has now mentioned Christine without saying her name, Robin without saying her name, and now Janelle without saying her name. So use some names or get, stop being confusing and don't be gross anymore. Jeez, oh, Pete. Uh, and then in stark contrast to what Cody was just telling us, Janelle says that nobody's working on their relationship. And, uh, yeah, we know, girl. Uh, and she doesn't want to start discuss hard things. She just wants to treat this kind of like a first date and just have a good time. So then we see Cody <laughs> giggling to himself about the secret reservation that he got. And, bro, I have seen what you think is fancy. I have seen it. I have seen it. I have seen it. And let me tell you, this could be the nicest restaurant to ever exist in Arizona, and I'm not going. I will stay here in my Midwest bubble, and I will eat crappy food, but not Skyline Chili. I am not that pathetic. Sorry, Cincinnati. Um, but I'm not going to Arizona to go to these restaurants. Maybe Salsa Brava, because Janelle and Christine did seem to enjoy it. As long as I don't have to sit at any table where Cody has been horking down those beans, because that was awful. Um... And uh, then he's giggling about it. Like, this is a first date. And uh, much like St. George, gross, Janelle says it's a nice gesture and thanks him for getting this reservation. Um, and then says something about, it sounds like he's always canceling their dates or something. I'm not entirely certain. It's really confusing. I, it was a quick thing and I heard it twice and I still didn't understand. Then he says he's jonesing because he wants to know if he's going to kiss her at the end of the date. No. Janelle tries to laugh and ask about first date questions and Cody shuts her down and Janelle seems actually deflated by this. Um, and then Cody admits to us that he got the reservation and dressed up all nice just because he wanted an edge to the reconciliation. So you didn't want to do something nice for your wife's birthday. You just wanted to use this to your advantage. Cool. Got it. Okay. Ah, uh, thanks. I hate it. He says there's a block and it's bringing him down a notch and then another block and it's bringing him down a notch. So basically you're just going to ruin this date because you can. And then Janelle uh, doesn't think there's a path forward for them, which there's not. He, she says uh, they're too different now and he's really wrapped up in Robin's kids and Robin wants to live life the way that he does and they seem very in sync. And she just wants a relationship where she's considered equal. And then she kind of asks to turn the camera off because she says it's a lot of pressure and I understand it would be a lot of pressure to put all of this out there. I know you've been doing it for years, but I understand what you're trying to say. Um, and then she says Sedona was nice, the meal was lovely, and they came home. She says at one point she did slip her hand into his, and it felt so wrong that she slipped her hand right back out. And I can understand that feeling like a habit. You've been married to this person for a long time. Um, and Cody says he doesn't know why they can't reconcile. They've had worse fights, and they've separated before. Janelle says there isn't anything there anymore. And that they've been unraveling for years. He says, I've been in love with her before, so I can do it again. And I want to feel like a person to her, not an object. That's not... That was a poor choice to end the episode on, because now we are just leaving with this taste of Cody's kind of an idiot. Unless that's what they were hoping for, but that's what we got from it. And then we get the next time on, and Garris uh, says, we were targeting her. Which means we are getting more about the text message thread. I am here for it. I am here. I want to know. 
I am not willing to, like, pay the kids for their text thread because that feels kind of gross, but I want to know. Uh, he brings up the fact that they've been doing gift exchanges for 20 years. And then Robin says, or Gwen says that Robin texted all of them to talk about how they didn't respect her as a mother. Okay. Okay. Um, so Christine is listening to all of this and she wonders if she hurt her kids by living plural marriage because Gwen says, I want to say I don't care, but I'm hurt. And she's like, oh crap, did I like wreck them? Um, so then we get to see McKelty gets to, you know, retain her gold star status as favorite child. It, it, it's not it, sis. And then we're going to see Christine celebrate her ex-anniversary. And she does say something a little ominous there about she wants to see Janelle get some friends because she's not going to be around forever. And um, everybody slow down. I don't really think that's about their friendship. I'm pretty sure Christine's saying we're not young. And so neither of us has promised tomorrow. But let's get some context next week because I don't think she's trying to dump Janelle. But other than that, that is my recap. This is all my opinion. It is not fact. It should not be taken as fact. I am just stating my opinion about things that we see on the television. Um, and so it, I, I have a lot of thoughts and feelings. I would love to expound on some of them more at a later time, but this video is already getting pretty long. I want to thank you guys so much for 60 subscribers. I know that in my last video, I said that my goal was 50 and you guys surpassed it. And I am so pleased. So let's make our next goal 100. We'll see when we get there. If we can get there by Christmas, great. If not, it'll be okay. And uh, I will look forward to talking to you some more. Don't forget to let me know what you think about all things Sister Wives in the comments down below. And I will see you soon.